So I wanted to start off today with uh, some of those FET simulations I told you about. If you just uh, search FET, stands for Physics Education Technology. The University of Colorado puts them out. You can actually download the entire site to your computer. So you don't need, once you do that, you don't need an internet connection. You can always have them on your computer and you can use them anytime. So here's one of them. We talked about the fact that <coughs> charges transfer because things rub together, right? That's how we get charges to transfer. So sometimes maybe you've noticed this yourself. You walk across the floor. Maybe you drag your feet on the carpet as you walk a little bit. And then you reach out to the doorknob and you get a shock. So they've built a little simulator to, to sort of, sh so you can visualize what's happening and you, you grab John Travoltage's foot, and you rub it on the carpet a little bit, and his charge builds up, right? There's some transfer going on there, and then when he reaches out to the doorknob, listen carefully. Then he gets his shock, right? So, uh, so this is sort of an example of one of those simulations that maybe, maybe you don't need this <laughs> simulation to visualize what's happening, but it, it's kind of cute. But there are some more that are, might, be, uh, might be a little more helpful. Again, rubbing causes charges to transfer. So we have a balloon and a wool sweater. What happens when we rub the balloon against the wool sweater? It picks up some charge, right? It has a stronger affinity for the electrons than the other material, the sweater. And so now the sweater is, has a net positive charge, the balloon has a net negative charge. We let go of the balloon, it wants to stick to that sweater, electrically attracted to the sweater. But if we bring it over to the wall, what happens? You see the electrons, the wall is not a, an electrical conductor, it's an insulator. So those electrons, they're tied to the atoms that they're with, they can't move around. But the electron cloud can shift a little bit. And the surface becomes slightly positive. With electricity, closeness counts because that electric force is heavily dependent on distance. And so we get an attractive force there. But it's a bigger force to the sweater because that's, those are opposite charges. This is just an induced charge on the, on the wall. OK? Maybe you didn't need a simulator for that. Let's take a look at, uh, at some electric fields. So here you can, you're trying to get the puck to go into the goal. So what could you do? You could put a positive charge over here. You could put a negative charge behind the goal, right? Because the puck is positively charged. Let's see what happens. All right. Now that one, that one's pretty straightforward, right? Let's increase the difficulty a little bit. Let's put a put an obstacle in the way. So now what do you do? You maybe put a positive charge over here. Those repel each other, right? And maybe we put a positive charge over here. And should we see what happens? OK. And you go to the next level, try to get it around those two. The third level is quite difficult. You want to know why it's so difficult? Because electric fields go over these walls, right? So you're trying to. You're trying to get the puck to go from here all the way through the, the maze to the goal. So you put a positive charge here to get it to go that way. Well, on its way back up through here, this is repelling it. And you have to, you know, its effect doesn't 
go away because it's on the other side of the wall. The electric fields go through the walls. So if you want to play with that a little bit. Anyway, uh, to give you an idea about electric fields. And I think I mentioned that it really becomes useful with circuits. So we'll get there pretty soon and we'll play with the circuit simulator a lot. In fact, I'll show you when we get there, you can attempt a problem in the book and set up the circuit identical to what they gave you in the book and then test it and see if you got the right answer. And it really helps, I think. So that's where they're really useful. The, you know, seeing that rubbing causes charges, yeah, it's kind of fun, but it, they really become useful as we move on into some other uh, topics here. Okay, so FET simulations, I wanted to show you that. And then while we're talking about the fact that rubbing causes charge transfer, I wanted to show you a little video here. Hold on, hold on. Okay, this is a surveillance camera at a gas station. Have you seen this video? Okay, she's gonna get the gas pumping, gets back in her car, slides out across the seat. Ooh. She was pretty calm. If that ever happens to you, run. <laughs> Don't play with the gas nozzle, run. I think actually it's, that doesn't happen very much these days because uh, all the gas nozzles have those sleeves that catch the fumes from around the outside. So uh, I think it's very, uh, chances of it happening are much less these days. But why did that happen? She got back in her car, slid out across the seat, didn't touch any metal. Should we see that again? didn't touch the car or anything till she got to the gas pump and that's where she got the spark. They say that this is a bigger problem for women because women actually get back in the car while they're pumping the gas and men just stand there and wait for the wait for the pump to finish so but uh, but that happens a lot, right? I, I, with my car, I don't know what Toyota puts on the seats of their car, but it seems like I get a shock every time I get out, right? I just, I don't like to be surprised by it, so I just kind of grab the door on my way out so I know it's coming and I get it over with. All right, and then we were talking about shielding. We did this little demonstration last time, right? Where we, uh, the electroscope, and we'll talk a little bit more about the electroscope, but we bring this over, the needle moves, is that right? And I put a metal cage around it. Nothing. And it moves, okay. So it's shielded, this is a charged object, has, fills the space around it with an electric field. The metal cage, the conductive cage, shielded the electroscope from the electric field. And I think I mentioned if you put a, uh, a person in a car, that's a pretty safe place to be in a lightning storm uh, because it's a metal cage, it protects you. You could try this at home. Get a couple of pie plates, it's aluminum pie plates, you know. Put your cell phone in there, close it up, squeeze it together, call your cell phone, it'll go right to voicemail. <laughs> try that at home. It'll be shielded from any uh, electric field trying to get into it. And if you put a person in a metal suit, they would be shielded from electric fields around them, right? I would like to do that for you, but I'm going to rely on the miracle of video to show you this next one. This is a pretty good demonstration of uh, Faraday suits. Maybe you've seen this one too.
I don't give two hoots and a holler about flying inside a helicopter. Put me outside. That's where I want to be. On the magic carpet. Back in the late 1800s, there was a gentleman by the name of Michael Faraday. He had a theory that if you enclosed a man in a metal cage and energized that cage at whatever voltage, the man would still live. The voltage would flow around him. I wear a hot suit. It's a 75% Nomex for fire retardant and 25% stainless steel thread. And that metal thread means I have a Faraday cage around me. A half a million volts pass over my body, but I can work without interference from the electricity. As long as the helicopter is isolated from ground, we have the ability to bring ourselves to the same voltage potential as the line, like a bird on a wire. Our pilots are very smooth. It's like they can read our every thought. There's such a hunger for electricity these days. Nobody wants to take lines out of service just to maintain them. I've had many people ask me, do you think what you do is safe? And I say, well, in our operation, everything that we do, every move that we make is thought of and rehearsed before, so it's as safe as crossing the street. It's not a job for a hot dog. There's only three things I've ever been afraid of. Electricity, heights, and women, and I'm married too.